needs to be some sort of reward. How are you going to add a habit into your life if there's no reward into it, right? So I can't ask you to add a habit like, um, let's say, eating right mm-hmm. and you don't lose any weight, right? That doesn't work. You need some sort of reward. So if I tell you you're going to eat right and after the next month, you're going to lose some weight, that's a little bit of a reward to change your habits. Yeah, but if absolutely. I said, let's have you eat right and there's nothing that's going to change, it's pretty much a waste of time because you you have no desire. <laughs> Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Dave, and I have my co-host today, uh, Sarah Rodriguez. She is my marketing director, but she's also someone that's gone through some significant changes in her life. So she's perfect for us to talk about everything that we need to talk about to help you optimize yourself. Um, So Sarah, we already spoke about several different things on our podcast, but today I wanted to speak to you about habits. So our whole plan is how are we going to help people to make these changes in the first 90 days so that I could actually see a change. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to try to walk you through four different key factors that will really help you change your mind and your thought process and how you carry yourself to make these changes and that they're really going to work. Okay. Okay. So we need to kind of wa- understand like why habits are important. And there's certain things that you need to understand when you're trying to form a new habit. You need something that's going to help you remind yourself of this habit. We call that a cue. So Mm -hmm. it could be a piece of paper on your refrigerator. Mm -hmm. Like for myself, I leave my my, uh, thyroid medicine right next to my phone. When it goes off in the morning, I know I got to pop my thyroid medicine. So you need something to help you remember what this new habit is going to be. So we call that a cue. It's this trigger that tells your mind, okay, it's time to go into automatic mode. I don't have to think about this anymore. And it's going to slowly help you to envelop this new habit into your life. The next thing is to be on a steady routine, right? So first you're going to have something that you remind you what to do. But the next thing is, look, I'm doing this all the time, every day. You wake up, you brush your teeth. It's just like that. So we want to make this habit actionable that you can do it every day so you can make it part of your daily routine. The last thing is there needs to be some sort of reward. How are you going to add a habit into your life if there's no reward into it, right? So I can't ask you to add a habit like, um, let's say, eating right Mm -hmm. and you don't lose any weight right? That doesn't work. You need some sort of reward. So if I tell you, you're going to eat right. And after the next month, you're going to lose some weight. That's a little bit of a reward to change your habits. But if I said, let's have you eat right. And there's nothing that's going to change. It's pretty much a waste of time because you have no desire. So we want to have a cue. We want to make sure we have a routine and we want to make sure that there's some sort of reward. And today, as we all know, everybody wants these immediate rewards, right? Yeah, absolutely. So you really have to make sure when you're picking these rewards that they're attainable, that you can constantly get there. There uh, was an author, Oliveria, in 2015, and he made four simple steps that you can use to help you to develop a better habit. So number one is you want to decide what habit that is. Right. Mm -hmm. So I want to wake up and make my bed. That's the new habit I want to do. So you want to write it down. Why? Because it's something that you're not doing. And this will help keep you more accountable. Right. So you want to write it down. You want to make sure you let other people know. You want to go public with it. And that way you can really start to develop your support team to help you. And then you have to have a backup plan in case you mess up. Okay. So these are the, the steps that we're going to go into and talk about. So If you think about it, why are habits so important when you're trying to make a change? Well, our habits make us who we are. The more disciplined we are, 
the more things that we do in a routine, people start to realize that and recognize that and see, you know what, that might be something that I want to do. That might be the behavior that I want to do. People are always watching and, and, and taking a look at what you're doing. So you want to make sure that you stay consistent in what you're doing. But the whole point of this is what is this going to do for this change in my life that I want to implement? Mm-hmm. You know, so the most important factors of how we're going to change our lives, right? So we have the the spiritual component. So how is a habit going to help you form or, or improve your life? Well, for me, I read my Bible. We're doing some meditation for stress relief. That's part of my routine, but that's going to help me calm down. It's going to help me live on an even keel basis. I don't get angry anymore. Um, I don't get upset anymore. I kind of am able to stay even keel with pretty much everything I do. And what does that help me with? Well, that helps me with every single relationship that I come in with. As you know, Sarah, when some things go wrong, I might get upset, but I'm not yelling. Um, I grew up with my mom yelling at me for everything. Uh, I don't know what your experience was like with your mom. I think that was just the 70s. (laughs) Maybe it was. That was just the 70s, yeah. I mean, my mom was a teacher, so not only did she have like those magic ears that she can hear you from down Mm -hmm. the block, uh, but she had the voice that could carry down the block too. Uh, In the old days, it used to be like, calling your name down the block when it was time to come home for dinner. So my mom had that voice that carried for miles and miles, but that's one aspect. So it's going to help you with your family. It's going to help you with your relationships with your family. What about finances? How are habits going to help us with finances? Well, the better habits you have, the more easily it's going to be for you to get your routine down and not make waste. By not making waste, you're going to be able to keep better track of your finances because you're going to do the things that you need to do, not the things that you don't need to do. And you'll have a way to keep yourself accountable now because you're having new habits that are going to help you keep on track. The next thing where it might really help us out is in our professional lives because it's going to help us become more efficient, which is going to help you with your job, which is going to help you perform better, and you'll be a better success. So I'm putting all of these things together. You can see how changing some of our habits to being beneficial are a big, big bonus. So how about, let's talk about choosing this one habit, right? How do we start to do these changes, right? So first thing is we have to pick this habit that we want to change. And I always recommend for people to pick something simple, Um, I used to never make my bed. And when I decided to change my life, that was the first habit that I took was making my bed. So if you're not making your bed, maybe that's a good way to start. But a lot of times you want to align this new habit with one of your goals that you have. So select that ideal goal that's going to put your life in line with what your purpose is. And then find a small habit that would really help you to maintain that. So you could always go towards your goal. So it's ideal for you to flourish when your goal is in line with this new habit. Be sure that when you pick this, it's going to be something that's going to be easy for you to achieve as you get better and as you do it more frequently, that you can notch up the difficulty level a little bit. You don't want to have something stagnant that you're not going to be able to improve on. So life is about adaptation. It's about change. You want to make sure even though your one habit is there, you might be able to manipulate that habit so it fits more into what you're trying to do. Because as I said, you want to start off with something simple. You want to start off with something that you can attain. Mm -hmm. And want to remember the purpose of that is that you're going to make it more difficult and more difficult and more difficult as you be, that habit comes more habit. <laughs> yeah. I hate defining a word with the definition, but it, there's no other way to say that, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then you also want to make sure that you have a long-term goal and a short-term goal. And I have found that that's so important on how I develop my habits because I have some habits that are going to take a little bit longer to put into my life mm-hmm. and I have some habits that I need to make immediate changes in. So for instance, Eating and eating healthy, that's an immediate change. That's a short-term 
habit that everybody needs to pick up. But a long-term habit might be something that I need to study every day so I can achieve a certain degree, or I need to get a certification, or I want to get a, a raise, whatever that may be. So you want to always have those short-term and long-term goals that are achievable, that you can go and get them. So I have changed so many habits in my life, I have to tell you. But recently, as I've gone through this evolvement in my life, this, this enhancement, the whole reason why we're doing this podcast, because I have made such significant changes in my life, and I want to help people to do those too. So I started it really small. I started it with making my bed. After I was able to get the habit underway, then I moved it to something else, mm -hmm. which was making sure that I have time to read. So every morning I wake up, take my shower, take my thyroid medicine, which is next to my bed stand, which is another habit that I introduced. I make my bed and then I go out on my terrace and I meditate, I read, and I spend time with me. And because I wanted to do these habits so desperately, they really weren't difficult for me to do and to turn into a daily experience because I really wanted them. And that's the other thing. If you want this so bad, it makes it a lot easier to make it into a habit. So I started off with those two, and now I keep adding more habits in and more habits in to my daily life. And it's really making a difference on my efficiency uh, it's making a difference on how people see me. You know, I used to always show up fashionably late. Mm -hmm. um, and everybody would know, oh, Dr. Suarez, he's going to be late again. Mm -hmm. And as I made these changes in my life, what did I do? One of the first things that I did was I'm not going to be late anymore. I made it a habit to pay attention to that time so I'm never late. And you know what? It's changed how people rely on me. Mm -hmm. Now they expect me to be there early or on time, yeah. which they didn't do that before. And it's made people respect me more. A little change like that. Why? Because you become uh, more of a person of your word, right? Which is really what's important, a man of integrity. So what about you, Sarah? Have, you, have there been any habits that you notice, like something small that has made a significant change in your life? Yeah, a habit that I, um, that I started was not eating past seven o'clock. That for me really helped me kind of, I wanted to drop some weight and that was like really, really helpful. Um, so I've continued that habit now and um, the weights come off. I've lost about five pounds, basically effortlessly just by stopping dinner by seven. So that's been really, really helpful. You know, that's always been like a big yeah. step of mine. Like people continue to eat late you know, we're busy, right? Our, our days are longer and longer. Yeah. But what do we do after dinner? Lie down, watch TV. Exactly. <laughs> right. So it's very yeah. important to develop those habits, eat a little bit earlier. Or the other thing that I'm telling people to do is get something, a habit that you can include when you relax. Okay. So sometimes I tell people, you know, a lot of people have treadmills and ellipticals in their house and they use them as coat hangers. Yeah. So what we want to do is make sure that doesn't happen. So I like to tell people to have habits that they are going to be able to do. So something simple like crunches, stretching, little mm -hmm. things that you can do that can change your life, but also make a difference in your life. Mm -hmm. So the other thing that I, I thought would be good to talk about is writing down your plan, right? Mm -hmm. And it, this is not just about habits. And, and later on, when, when I give a full summary of keys to success and making the change, I'll bring up all the little things that we've already talked about and how important they fall into context. But obviously, when we're talking about writing your plan down, if you don't plan your life, your life is going to plan you. Very common quote that we hear all the time from people that are trying to uh, drive you towards success, motivational speakers and all of that. Mm. And something that we use in our practice of the act of inaction is worse than any action. If you don't make a change, your life's going to stay exactly the same. Yeah. The whole purpose that you're here is because you want to make a change. You already made that first step. So let's go. Let's continue with that step. So let's try to say, okay, now I got this plan. I want to, and again, it should be a long-term and a short-term goal, long-term and a short-term plan. So let's say 
my plan. I want to eat a uh, protein shake, you know, at 10 o'clock every day. Mm-hmm. So I have to wrote, write my plan. My plan is going to be, I'm going to get up. I'm going to do what I, you know, I'm going to brush my teeth. I'm going to take a shower. I'm going to go to the gym. As soon as I get home from the gym, I'm going to have my protein shake. Then I'm going to go have lunch and then I'm going to go shower and go to work. So how do we make this into a habit? Well, now I know it's all written down. I know what time of day I wanted to look for it. I know after I take a shower, what I'm supposed to do next. And I have a nice little routine that I'm able to use that I'm able to make a difference. And I'm able to change my plan. So how do we do that? So now we identify what we want to do for the day. And then we want to create like a little habit loop. Mm -hmm. Cue, the routine, the reward. What's going to be the identifying factor? Sometimes I have to set an alarm on my clock to help in the meantime. But until I get used to my schedule, you got to do whatever you need to do to help you remind mind to do things according to your new habit loop. So your cue, is it going to be when I'm hungry? So if we're going to say I want my, my new habit that I want to do is eating this protein shake. So is the cue going to be hunger? No, because I might not be hungry. The cue is going to be when I get home from the gym that I have an alarm go off that's going to remind me to eat my shake. That's the cue. Or that I'm going to put a sticky note on the box of shakes and leave them on the counter. Or I'm going to put a sticky note on the blender when I come home. Or leave it there in the morning. So I always remember. So that's your cue. Next is the routine, right? So now every day, get home from the gym, boom, have my shake. You get into that routine, that's how you form that routine is the habit component. So the cue is going to help you remember it. The routine is what you're going to do on a daily basis. All right, so now we got my cue, the alarm clock, right? Mm -hmm. Then we got my routine. After the gym, boom, drink my shake. Now, the last part is probably the most important because if you get those first two and it's great, but if you don't get this third one, it's all a waste of time. The third part is the reward, right? If you don't get your reward, what's the whole purpose of doing anything? Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yes. So we want to make sure that you're able to achieve your goal. You're able to achieve your plan. You're able to achieve your routine. And you need this reward, which is going to bonus you or benefit you or give you what you're looking for. So if we're talking about eating the shake in the after the workout, What are some of those benefits? Well, I'm not going to be hungry for a couple of hours. I'm going to be able to stay leaner. I'm going to get bigger muscles. Wow, look at those three rewards real quickly. That might encourage me to keep this habit, right? So you want to make sure that when we do have these things and we add our plan and we add this habit and we go the cue, the routine, the reward, number one, we want to make sure that we're able to attain that reward. We don't want to make this habit so difficult that, number one, it's going to be too difficult to do. And that's probably something I haven't even said, right? We're going to be making these habits. You want to make sure this habit is easy to do, which is part of your plan, right? Because if you're going to say, I need to jog 40 miles, well, how are you going to add that into your day, right? 40 miles is a full marathon or even more than a marathon. Mm -hmm. But that's crazy, right? So you have to make sure this is an attainable goal. Something that you could do, and it's going to help you measure how successful you really are by the time you're completing these things. So if you create this routine and this ritual right after you have your cue, those two things are going to reinforce themselves. And then the benefit that you're getting is what's really going to kick you to that next level. Mm -hmm. So an example for me, and I use the protein shake one, but that's really not one that I really use because I have protein shakes sporadically throughout the day. If I get hungry, I have a protein shake. So for me, what it was, was getting in this new habit that I do every day. And when I really started to make a change in my life, I wake up, I meditate, I read, then I go to the gym, then I come home, then I shower, then I go to work. And that's part of my routine every day, every day. And you know what? It doesn't change. And sometimes if I have a little bit extra time and I'm bored, I might do some of those things twice. I might go to the gym twice. I might read twice. Um, Reading is probably a huge part of my life at this point because I'm learning so much how much to grow and enhance my life. So reading has really become a big part. So for me, making all of those 
concepts into a habit that I can perform every day really made a difference for me. As a result of that, my life has really changed. I started a men's group. Me, a man, has even started a, a woman's group mm -hmm. because I found that as I was talking to my friend buddies, women had the same issues. So I started that all from writing a plan, getting my habit, my cue, my routine, and my reward. Out of that is where I spurred a men's group and a female group. Pretty crazy. Especially. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> I always laugh about it with my friend Rob because I'm like, you know, how many men do you know that start a women's group? I can't even be in the group. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, everybody has this, those needs and we want to make sure that we're able to help as many people as possible. So to me, it's really important. I don't care whether you're a man or a woman or you're an alien. If I can help you, I want to help you. So what about you? Have, have you had any scenarios where you've done your cue, the routine, the reward? I mean, I know you with the, the fitness contest and that's pretty disciplined and you had to make a lot of habits in order for that stuff to stick. So what was like maybe one of the, the habit loops that you had uh, when you were training for your shows? I think that um, getting up early was really key for me kind of to get that time um, to get my workout in when it was quiet, when my kids were still sleeping before work, before family. Um, if I didn't make that time for myself, it wasn't going to happen during the day. So for me, during that time, waking up, you know, a few hours early really gave me that advantage to kind of get all those things accomplished. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it just makes so much uh, of a, a big difference when you get all your habits aligned, your time efficiency goes through the roof. Yeah. The next thing that I wanted to talk about was making sure that you let other people know about your habits. You want to develop a support team to help you keep your habits. And man, I'm telling you, this is so important. You want to ask all your friends, your family, your colleagues, anyone that cares about you to jump on board, be on your support team and hold you accountable. Now, I'm not talking about little habits, like, like I said, making your bed and, you know, is, are people really going to be able to hold you accountable for that? No, not even close. But what they can hold you accountable for is, did you make your bed today? Yeah. Yes. Are they going to go check it? No, but it should be. No out of respect, right? Did you make your dead today? Yeah, well, I forgot, you know. Well, you know, Dave, I thought you were going to start some new habits. You know, you got to do it. So next, as soon as you get home, I want you to let me know that you made your bed. And I'm telling you, starting off something simple like making your bed makes such a huge difference in your habits. Mm -hmm. So if you have people that hold you accountable, you just tend to really do a lot better. I, I mean, I've done that for weight loss. I've done that for coaching, you know, that buddy system, having that person to hold you accountable other than yourself, but not just hold you accountable, cheer you on, be your cheerleader, have your back, make sure you don't falter. Somebody that you can report your progress to, and they're going to be so ecstatic for your results that you can't wait to do it another day. Yeah. You know, and I, I tell you that it rings true to me so much. Everything that I've ever tried to do in my life, my best friend, Rob, my best friend, Larry, they never doubted no matter what I did might not have been the best business plan, but they know, they know me, they know my personality and they know when I get something in my head, I have to go do it, but they still held me accountable. Dave, I'm not sure if that's the right decision. I mean, I do it anyway, because I'm not that bright sometimes. But I, I did notice as I've started to make all of these aspects and draw them in and, and have them motivate me in my life, I have found that I don't make as many mistakes, that I am more adaptable to change. So I think that's really made a difference on how I carry myself. The other thing I think that's really important as far as accountability is everybody should be keeping some sort of journal. Mm -hmm that you're going to write down what you do because you can't lie to yourself, right? Yeah. So you want to make sure that you can hold yourself accountable too. And that helps your coaches or your friends that are keeping an eye on you have something to read and say, hey, you said on Thursday you ate great, but I remember you ate pizza. So little things like that can really make a difference on your success. What about you? Have you found anything as far as what your goals um, that you really depended on a support system or someone else to really make 
uh, work for you? Yeah, I think that um, just announcing my goals to my friends and kind of speaking it out loud really changed um, my commitment to it um, and keeping that habit because I knew that um, my friends were watching um, and that not watching in a bad way, but keeping me accountable to that habit. So it was it was very helpful. Yeah, I, I mean, I need that accountability aspect is just yeah. amazing on how it makes you change what you would normally do, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Um, and and I think, you know, we've incorporated that in our practice when we do our, our health and wellness programs and we have, you know, obviously programs a little bit more attention, some with a little bit less attention. But what we have definitely found out when we have those accountability calls once a week, our patients are all successful with that. Why? Because yeah. you're putting their feet under the fire. You're making them do what they don't want to do, but it's getting it done. Really, really, really. Important. Yeah. You know. The last part about starting a new habit, it's really important. So we spoke about the reward of bringing on a new habit, right? We spoke about how you want to have a support team. The first thing that we spoke about was that you had a habit for the right reason and that it was one habit that you can identify and help you towards your goal. But all of that means nothing, okay? If when you don't make your goal, What's your plan B? Mm. Because if you don't have a plan B, you can throw yourself into such turmoil, get so upset and so depressed that you'd never want to do a program again. It could be catastrophic because not everybody holds failure the same way. Remember, the old saying is, at first, if you don't succeed, try and try again. I'm not big on that. At first, you don't succeed. You get up. You wipe yourself off and you do it again. Doesn't mean you're going to get it. You know, I have <laughs> the last uh, practice of uh, when I played semi-pro football and I became an old man and I, and I was in between my first and second year of medical school in Chicago. Uh, let me see. This is um, 2000 and between 2005, no, turn 2005, 2006. So it was a 2006 uh, summer of 2006. And um, I flew home to New Jersey from Chicago and I saw my old football team. Now, man, they were still practicing. I got my football equipment went. This was without practicing at all, just jumping on the thing. Now, these guys have been practicing for two and a half months. Mm -hmm. So I come in there, you know, I'm ready to go all again. My friends are like, now my friends that I used to play with are coaches, right? <laughs> okay. So they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, man, I'm going to try out for the team. Like, really? I'm like, yeah. So I went to practice. And man, my, I have to tell you, when I was young, I used to love practice. I used to do very well in practice. But um, this scenario didn't go over that well. Uh, we had a drill called nutcrackers where you lie in your back and the coach blows the whistle and you got to get up real fast and run towards the other person. And, you know, if you're on offense, you run with the ball. If you're on defense, you got to tackle them. And, it's a big mess, very big drill, a lot of fun, a lot of noise. But you know what happened? Uh, I was always very aggressive when I played football. I used to hit people real, real hard, and I used to really love it. Mm -hmm. um, but what happened was, and I used to win these pretty much regularly. I, I didn't lose two, two in a row, three in a row. I might lose one out of three, but I usually didn't lose too many. But this day, now I am a... 35 year old guy and I'm playing with guys that are in their low twenties. So I'm like 12, 13 years older than these guys. Mm. So I'm obviously not as lean. I'm obviously not as in shape. I'm obviously not as fast. And you know, it's really funny when I, when I was playing football, um, when I was younger, you know, obviously I was getting slower as I got, I got older, but you know, I was still pretty fast, still pretty strong. Well, let me tell you something. After coming back after like seven years of not playing, well, I shouldn't say seven. I think it was four years of not playing. I come back and I'm on the field and we do this nut tracker drill and bam, guy beats me. Got up again. Guy beats me. Now, usually you do two or three and you're done. And then the coach says somebody else. Now, don't forget, I played with all these coaches, right? So I did it again and again and again and again. <laughs> Oh, gosh. <laughs> now, you know how stubborn I am. Yeah. 
it got to the point that my friends that I played football with and they love me like brothers were like, Dave, stop. You're done. Let it go. What I do? Nope. Not done. Again, the guy probably beat me 15 times in a row. The last time I was like stumbling, getting up that everybody was like, you're done. You're done. They wouldn't even let me go again. Now, 15 times is pretty exhausting. We were both shot. But in my mind, I didn't have a plan for a failure because I never thought I was going to fail. I didn't have a plan for that next step in case I didn't get what I needed. And that's what we're talking about here. So if you have your habit, so let's say I'm going to eat that protein shake at 10 o'clock after the gym every day. So what happens if I forget to eat that? What do you do? Well, this case, it's really simple, right? So you need to carry, um, you need to have a conditional plan in case you do it, you don't do it. So you can carry your protein shake with you. You can buy a little mini blender. Remember the bullet? They have a lot, a lot of them out right now. They have the ones that you can self-shake. So that's what you're going to have to do. You have to have something in case this fails. You need to make sure that you want to be as honest with yourself as possible when you're trying to figure this out and try to think of all the possibilities of failure. There's nothing wrong with failing. The problem is stopping because you never fail until you stop trying. As long as you keep going, as long as you keep pushing through, you always have an opportunity for success. But when you say, I'm done, when I said with football, I'm done, that was the last time I ever played football because I was done. No more excuses. I'm not good enough. I'm not fast enough. I'm not lean enough. Not good enough. Not good enough is very difficult to understand and, and to comprehend as a human being. Very difficult for us to get that. So you got to be really honest with yourself. If, if you're having trouble with a habit that just you can't get on track, is it something that you just made too impossible to make into a habit? So you might need to break up that habit into smaller sections so you can achieve them, right? You can't do it all at once because you saw that already. So break it up into smaller components. And eventually you'll be able to overcome and be triumphant over that habit that you just couldn't get done before. There's nothing wrong with starting from the beginning again. There's nothing wrong with adapting or revising your plan because the first one's not working. It's very important to keep that in mind that you do not need to be successful every time. We fail. We're supposed to fail. You learn more from failing than you do from succeeding. You know, I listen to um, Joel Osteen a lot, and he's uh, an evangelist, and a lot of people have problems with him, but I just find all of his sermons to be so inspirational. You know, and he always talks about the tests that you're getting in your life and how they shape you and form you. And then what he says is all of these tests will build you up, strengthen you, help you to persevere. Help to build up your character. And then your tests are now your testimony. You take this whole life that has made you become a victim. And now you are victorious. So do you have anything that has happened in your life like that? You had your goal set up here. And then you're like, you know what? Let me start at level one before I go up to level two. Like, I'll give you another quick example. I play Madden football with my son. My son's 10. You know, I'm 50-something, whatever. So I play with my son. And when I don't play with my son, I play on such a difficult level. <laughs> like, I, and it's embarrassing how bad I am when I'm playing that level. But I try to play that hardest level, right? I, I try to, and it's called all Madden in Madden, Right. I mean, it, it, I look so bad, you know, I'm losing like 75 to nothing in like six minutes into the game. Like, it's crazy. But when I play my son, I try to play on his level. So he gets an understanding because if I play at the, if I play at the very hard level and he plays at a very simple level, he looks like the, stupor, the superstar, not me, because my joystick or the, the compli it's complicated on what I need to do because they add features in as it gets more complicated. So like if you press the circle on the beginner, 
it might make you spin. You press the circle when you're more advanced, it might make you spin, make a juke move and jump at the same time, just to give you an example. So mm-hmm. those type of things, it's I'm exaggerating and that's not really what happens, but just to give you an understanding. When I play, I'm prepared to get my butt beat in that game. And my son just had wrestling and he prepares every day before he goes to wrestling. So his habits, the day before he has a wrestling tournament, he eats fish for dinner. This little kid has a habit because he has to weigh in in the morning. He's going to have fish for dinner because it's light. So we're only allowed to have fish. And he, he loves salmon. So it has to be salmon. Or the other option is um, we can have sushi. He loves okay. sushi too. So those are our two option, options. So if he has two days of tournaments, one day we have sushi. <laughs> the other day we have salmon. So cute. But he's already developed those type of habits. Um, he's developed that habit for making his bed. Mm-hmm. Haven't really helped him to develop the habit of putting his clothes away or putting them in the, the hamper. And I think almost every parent has that problem with their kids. And um, his mom used to say to me, well, I have the same problem because she's like, I don't understand. You have the biggest hamper in the house, but you seem to miss it all the time. <laughs> Another habit that I've tried to really make part of my life is to make sure that I have time for me every day. So I've done that recently. So what about yourself? Is there any habits that you've had that either you had to change or that weren't good for you and you made, you made that alteration and then you were able to see that reward at the end? I think that it's taken me sometimes for certain goals or habits that I have to kind of get going. Um, so I'll definitely restart like on a Monday, um, if I had a bad go of it the week before. (laughs) So I do give myself that reset and say like, it's okay. You didn't reach those habits this week, but this is a new week and, you know, we'll stay focused this week. So I kind of have a little inner dialogue where I reset, um, the bad week with a good week starting on Monday. So actually I'm, (laughs) I'm. Resetting this week to start a good week. Uh, no, last week I, I think that's really funny because, um, you know, obviously we haven't done a weight loss program together because you've been working on that on your own. So you don't need me for that. But one of the things oh, that drives me totally crazy when um, a patient's on a weight loss program and they cheat on Thursday and they say, it's okay, I'll just restart on Monday. <laughs> well, they cheat on Monday and say, oh, it's okay, I'll restart next week. No, 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 no. If you cheat for breakfast, you're restarting your lunchtime. You don't get that. You don't get to skip a day, especially when you're talking about like a weight loss type of change. What happens a lot of times is we think about diets, which is like the worst thing you could ever do, right? You don't want to think about diet. You want to think about lifestyle change. So if you eat healthy every day, there's no such thing as cheating. That's just not eating healthy for the day. Not cheating because you're not on a diet. The problem that we come up with in our lives is we stop punishing ourselves when we don't do what we say we're going to do. When you're a child, you don't do what you say you're going to do. You get hit in the head by your parent, right? (laughs) Well, maybe not anymore. Maybe they might smack you you in the butt if they could still do that. But as you get older, those smacks become a lot more significant in your life. So you really want to start to learn that as a child. You got to learn how to stay on track. You got to learn how to not make your situation worse and to develop these habits so you could really start to see the change of slow, consistent adjustments that are really going to help you push yourself to that next level. I really think that most people get stuck on the reward component when we're talking about habits and what to do when you fail. I think that's huge because the reward is important. But if you fail, you got to get back on that horse right away, man. Right away. It's not going to benefit you off the horse. Get back on. You're right. You already lived your life off the horse. So we spoke about habits. We spoke about why they're important. How do you develop them? Some essentials of habits. And then we talked about some of our experiences. You know, Pure Wellness Medical was developed as a medical practice basically for hormones and weight loss. And we grew to integrative medicine and aesthetics and IV therapy and all these other fun treatments and regenerative medicine and sexual health. And and as the practice has grown, our purpose has grown. 
we're no longer just a medical practice. We are a life changing practice. And I think people have to understand that as you're looking for changes in your health, as you're looking for changes in your relationships, you need to make sure that you're going to the right place for those things. You surround yourself with the right people. You surround yourself with that support system. That's another thing I think that people are really lacking. When I first went out to graduate school in Long Island, didn't have a support system out there, had no friends, nothing. When I moved out to Florida now, I had friends here, had my staff here that I can count on. And I made new friends. I didn't do that when I was in Long Island. Mm. And it's really important to have all of those aspects if you're really going to make these habits stick. So the reward is a huge part of it. And then having something to do when you fail is so big. Again, you're not failing unless you're quitting, right? So that's most important. But how can you recapture that winning attitude? Right. And we're going to go into a lot in the future when we talk about mindset. I mean, there's so much to talk about, about changing lives. We have to really dig down and get into every little aspect of it. Right. So we spoke about all these different concepts and, and how they really make a difference. So I think what we should do is have people have some homework today that deals with habits. So I think everyone should, number one, write down their goal. What is their main goal in your life? Whether it's spiritual, physical, personal, financial, professional, whatever it may be. Write down your number one goal. Next thing is pick a habit that's going to get you closer to that goal. Now, it doesn't have to be the whole thing. It might just be getting a cup of coffee. It might be taking your medication that you're supposed to take every day. It might be taking vitamins. It might be doing exercise before you go to work. But do something that's going to really impact you so you know that you can get on this road to make a change. So number one is identify your goals. Number two is identify an attainable goal. And with that attainable goal, you need to write the cue. What's going to make you realize that you have to do it. And don't forget the routine component, right? So you're going to be able to bring that into your life. And then the last one is the reward. What is this habit benefiting my purpose? How is it doing that? And you need to rationalize these things because when you're going to wake up in the morning and to go do this, it's not going to be rational at that point. You want it to be habit forming. So it's really important to take those concepts. We also were very diligent um, to speak about how these habits are so important to form, but that you need to be accountable for these things. So what I'm going to ask is, so not only are you going to write down what your goals are, how this habit is going to get you there, or what the habit is that's going to help you get there, but then I want you to write down three people that you're going to tell about your plan and about your habits so you can be accountable to them. And lastly is what are you going to have to do if you're having trouble with your habit? So you need an attack plan. And I, I, like, I like to use three things, but you always have that option, right? So mild, moderate, severe kind of options. But try to pick something that's going to really help you. If you're faltering with your, if you're not able to wake up early in the morning, why is that? Try to figure out why you're faltering, but also have that backup plan ready. And I think by you including that backup plan as you develop your habit, it's going to make it so much easier for you to be successful at it. So, Sarah, thank you very much. Um, I am very appreciative of all your insight. I know you're not prepared for all these conversations. <laughs> Reality is, that's what life is, right? You get thrown yeah. things, you just got to learn how to deal with it. And, and that's part of what we're doing is, is getting you prepared for that next phase in your life. So it's important that you come to every podcast. It's important that you listen. If you have any questions, please write us. We'll be more than happy to get in touch with you to answer those questions. So thank you again. This is Dr. Dave and this is Sarah, and we'll speak to you soon.